Hey, so welcome to today's video. I'm Ruben, I'm a transformational coach and I specialize in helping individuals overcome social anxiety. Today, what I'm gonna do is a reaction video to none other than Andrew Tate. I'm gonna give my thoughts on the whole Andrew Tate facade that's going on right now. He bursted onto the social media scene, got a massive amount of attention, and more recently, he's been completely banned from, from social media because his message is considered to be that toxic for both, both young men and women, okay? So I'm gonna react to, to Andrew Tate today and why I think his whole message is false, okay? So let's go. And so I do have some, some concerns about Andrew Tate's message um, because there's a lot of young men who are going to be influenced and impacted by his content, okay? And there's a lot of women who are gonna be impacted just by virtue of these young men watching his, his content, okay? And I, I wanna give you an idea. So I saw a couple of videos and I'm totally paraphrasing this, okay? So please, in the comments, if I'm getting this completely wrong, let me know in the comments and we can have a discussion. But one of the things he was saying in a video, he was saying, as a man, you know, as a man, I cannot take, afford to take a day off because of my feelings. So as a man, I cannot afford to take a day off because of my mental health. I can't take a mental health day. And he had this, this really strong belief that it's this harsh, cold world out there for men and nobody um, really cares about how they feel and they have this duty to get out there and just work, work, work. Okay, so that was one thing. Another thing that I saw was he, he was giving his opinion on Robin Williams. Robin Williams, obviously the, the brilliant, famous comedian that committed suicide eventually um, because he was dealing with depression. And I remember in, his, in that video, he was saying the reason he killed himself or the reason that he never got over his depression is because he was seeing a therapist for like 10, 11 years and talking about depression over and over and over um, and how that's depressing in itself. With It has some truth to it. I'm not gonna lie there. It does have some truth to it, but he was basically, he ended off with saying, if you're feeling depressed, you're basically stupid or you're dumb. Something like that. He had something really, really um, harsh judgment against somebody who's going through some depression, okay? And I also wanna open this up to a lot of content creators. This is becoming the dominant narrative that I see out there on YouTube and other social media platforms is this whole thing about make men great again, okay? Men need to be traditional again. Oh, men need to be masculine. And how men have become too soft and they need to take their power back. And there's this, this whole crusade you know, again, sometimes it's against directed towards women. Sometimes it's directed to, to men who've become wusses. Um, and I'm gonna formulate, I'm gonna hit it from a different angle today. So I'm gonna talk about it through the lens of this book, Power Versus Force, okay? It's a book by world-renowned psychiatrist David R. Hawkins, okay? The Hidden Determinants of Human Behavior. So I'm gonna really seek to help you understand, give my thoughts on what's driving this whole crusade, okay? Red pill, and even the softer content creators that are trying to make men more masculine. And so let's talk about this right now because essentially there, there's two ways that you can have influence over somebody else or have influence over other people, okay? Now think of, of power, okay? So how, David Hawkins, how he, he defines power is, let me, I'm gonna read this out to you right here, okay? So it's that which supports the significance of life itself, and it appeals to that which uplifts, dignifies, and ennobles, okay? It's a very uplifting way to, to power up the way you influence other people. And you can think of power as it's, it's fueled up by love, okay? Love fuels that entire way of being, using real power, real power to create movement in the world, okay? As opposed to force. Think of force, force is 
the result of feeling powerless. Okay, so what do you do to overcompensate for feeling powerless is you seek out, you seek out externally to manipulate and control the environment. Okay, you're using force, you're trying to manipulate, you're trying to control, and you're using other people to increase your self-worth. And I'm gonna give you a ton of examples. I'm gonna give you examples that are really tangible and you can sink your, te sink your teeth into. You, you probably experienced them yourself. And then also at the more historical, the more macro level. And so here's an example of force. So obviously this is a channel dedicated to social anxiety. So let's give you some social anxiety examples. When you use force, okay? So let's say you go into a group, right? Think of force as fake power, it's not real power. You go into a group and you're feeling extremely awkward, very awkward, and so what do you do is you're too scared to give your opinion. You're so scared of how you're coming across, so you just stay quiet. Don't give your opinion, um, you don't contribute to the group, you're just kinda in there as this bystander, while everyone is in there contributing their opinions and giving their energy into the group discussion, okay? And so you're in there, you're, you're, you're shy, you're awkward, you're quiet, okay? That is a form, this is gonna be hard to take, this is gonna be hard to accept, okay? Just a heads up here. That's a form of manipulation and control, okay? Let me explain here. When you go quiet, when you don't give your opinion, you're trying to control other people's perception of you. Because if you don't give your opinion, you won't get rejected. Or if you don't give your opinion, you won't be judged for having that opinion. And therefore judged for who you truly are, what you're actually thinking and feeling in here. Nobody's gonna judge you for it. So do you see how controlling that truly is? You're trying to control the other people and they can feel it. They can feel what you're thinking, what you're feeling inside, and they can feel that they're being controlled and no human being, absolutely, absolutely no human being likes being controlled and manipulated. We have a nervous system that's 100% engineered to pick up on this thing when we're being lied to, we're being manipulated, we're being controlled, okay? So the other people in the group, they feel like they're being, trying to be, con they're controlled by you, you're sapping the energy in the group, you're bringing the group energy down. And so what happens is, they're going to start thinking of you as that awkward person, the one person who's not getting involved. The one thing that you were trying to not have happen, to be perceived as awkward, uh, and be, be perceived as anxious, okay? It happened anyway. Everybody's perceptions, everybody's opinions, because you were that one lone soldier in there, that's their opinion anyway. Why? Because you were trying to use force. You were trying to use fake power. To deal with your feeling of being powerless in that group, you tried to overcompensate and try to control the situation through your silence. And so let's give a, uh, an example of power, okay? Power is if you went into the group, okay? So you went into the group and you were feeling completely, fully present in bodies, no anxiety. You are just happy to be there, you're happy to connect with people, you truly wanna to get to know the people in the group, okay? And because you're in such a loving vibration, you pay a compliment toward, to somebody in the group. It's like, hey, that's a, you know, that, that suit you're wearing is on point, or I really like those shoes, whatever you say. And you genuinely, you're not, asking for anything back. In this energy, giving and receiving is one and the same. Giving is receiving. You give that compliment, right? Because it feels good to give that good energy. You don't want anything in return. You're not needy at all, okay? And when you give that good energy, what happens is that other person, they start to like you. And then you start to connect. You start to form a bond because you're using true power. And here's another example of true power. Let's say you are feeling a bit nervous and, and awkward, is you share truthfully what's going on. You say to the next person, hey, like I have no idea who anyone here is, feeling a bit awkward, okay? And you bring forward your vulnerability and your truth, okay? Not in a needy way, in a, in a way because you wanna share what's going on with you 
with the group, okay? And then another person jumps in, yeah, I don't know anybody either. Ooh, I feel pretty awkward too. And then what, again, you, you get these connections and you start building a bond. You start sharing these moments together, okay? Because you're sharing truthfully your vulnerabilities and what's actually going on and not in a manipulating way. So that's another way that power will truly shine through in those moments. And Dr. Hawkins goes on to say in, in, in the book, right? That force will always, always, always be defeated by power. Always, okay? You know, sometimes, you know, let's say if you're, you're feeling awkward and you, you bump into that very loving, energetic, kind person who's truly interested in you, sometimes they, they make you feel so connected and they make you feel so welcome and, and warm inside that you forget about the awkwardness. It disappears because you feel safe with that person, okay? And that's why power will always, always defeat force. Now let's go up to the historical level here, right? Let's take this a bit, bit further. Now think about who you think the most powerful individual is who's ever walked the earth, okay? Think about it now. And the most powerful, who's considered to be the most powerful at least one of them, right? Who's considered to be the most powerful individual that's ever walked the earth is Gandhi, okay? And he's known for bringing an end to colonial rule in India, okay? So one skinny, 90 pound, doesn't have a nice body, he, um, he's not the best looking dude, he you know, doesn't have any money, okay? So how is somebody with out all of these status symbols that we've come to believe is actual power, but it's not real power. How did he have such power to bring down the entire British empire in India? And it's because he, he stood by a principle. He stood by the principle, and I'm gonna read it off to you here, okay? And the principle is that there's an intrinsic dignity of men and, and women, and his right to freedom of so and sovereignty and self-determination, okay? And such rights derived demand by virtue of the divinity of his creation, okay? What does that mean? Is it's your absolute birthright to actualize your full potential, okay? It's your absolute, it's only because you're born, okay? It doesn't matter what you do in the world. You have value just because you're, you're here and you're breathing. You're watching this video, just because you're breathing and you're here and you're in your body, you have value, deep value. And so the long story short is, he lit this flame in 350 million Indians at the time that they all have this, this birthright to actualize their full potential, to be self-determining, okay? To be in control of their own destinies, okay? That's the flame he lit, and he lit that flame in 350 million Indian people who all banded together, and then obviously like 100,000, 200,000 guards, whatever it was, British guards, they did not have the power to stand up to 350 million Indian people, and so they, they got the boot, essentially, okay? Now, you have to understand that the British was using force. They were all about controlling that economy. And one thing to really, to note here, is you know that powers, it's, it's fueled by love, okay? Force is fueled by fear, okay? It's like the, the example with the group. The reason you're using that force in the group in being awkward and silent is because there's so much fear running through you. Fear fuels that. Remember, the feeling of fear fuels that feeling of being powerless, okay? And when you feel like that, then you go out and you try to manipulate and control. And this is why I think Andrew Tate's message is complete falsehood. I think it's a complete fad. And even on the, the other channels, it's very concerning because I see, even see in the comments, young men, men even, you know, 50s and 60s are commenting, Thanks for speaking the truth, okay? You speak nothing but the truth. I love following your channel, I love your content because you speak the truth. And the problem is they don't know what truth is, okay? 
Truth is something that never wavers. It's infinite, okay? It's fueled by love. There's no start and there's no end to it, okay? Force is transitory. It's not infinite. It's the latest trend. So think about it this way. Is there something that you, you strongly believed in, you know, last year, a couple of years ago, that you don't believe in anymore, okay? That's force. It's just a belief. It's just a certain way of influencing somebody or something in the world in some way because you have a certain belief system in that time. Now, going back to his message about the, the depression, Robin Williams' depression, okay? Now, he had very strong energy that if you think you're depressed, you're, you're stupid, you're being stupid. Um, now, here's the thing, okay? All judgment is self-judgment, okay? And really what that tells me is depression is, is depression. Everybody has a very subjective experience with it, okay? But the point I'm trying to make is he, he has a whole lot of energy on it, okay? He feels so strongly about it that you can see there's some unresolve within himself, okay? That's what I'm trying to point out. Let me give you an example, okay? So this is a, this is a personal example that I actually experienced myself. I remember, this is about seven years ago. I want to say seven, eight years ago, okay? First starting to take care of my mental health, and I remember I was going to open up to one of my friends, okay? I, I was saying, you know, I'm tired of just having these superficial friendships. We, none of us knows what's going on with each other. I'm going to go open up to this, this one guy that I, that I felt like could, could handle it. He had the capacity to handle what I was going to share. So I, we went out for a coffee, and I remember sharing with him. I was like, you know, going through some really hard time right now. Um, and, you know, I feel, you know, extremely depressed. You know, my mom's extremely depressed. I've never seen my mom happy. You know, she's isolated in the house. And I was sharing all this, this information with him. And his response. So check out his response. His response was, you know, completely, completely invalidates right away. You know, that whole depression thing, um, yeah, you know, people like to use that label and they, they like to feel special and they want to use that label and they try to turn, you know, they try to make something out of nothing, basically, okay? And his whole point was basically saying that depression is a fad and it doesn't exist, okay? So that, that was his response, okay? A lot of judgment. And my body's going, you know, my body's going tense. It's, uh, you know, I'm feeling completely tense inside. I was just beginning to learn how to trust myself at that time. So my body's telling me something's really off here, okay? Now, his next, the next thing he said was, because now he, then he played his card. So I knew where, I didn't, I didn't get it right in that moment, but it hit me on the drive home. And so he goes on to say, you know, my wife thinks I'm depressed, but... You don't see me, you know, sitting around. I still do what I have to do. So you, you see the response? He just played his cards. He actually probably is depressed. Not because his wife thinks he is, because he has so much energy on what I'm saying. There's a strong reaction within himself. Me talking about depression caused this big reaction and judgment. What does that tell me? Is there something unresolved within him? That he's dealing with. So, so think about it this way. If, if you have an ex-girlfriend, right? You have an ex-partner and you're, you're out and about and you're talking with somebody, you're talking with your friend and they mention that ex's name, okay? If you have a huge emotional reaction, you're not over it. You have unresolved feelings inside that you need to heal from, okay? If they mention your ex's name and you have no reaction at all and you're just kind of, you know, you wish them the best, you got, you got good feelings, good will, good intentions for, for them in their life, that means you've healed, okay? So going back, remember, all judgment is self-judgment, okay? It's, it's whether or not you have energy on that thing that you're talking about, whether it's depression you know, whether it's, it's, you know, women or the opposite sex, 
It's your energy on that thing. And I'll give you another example here. This is so common. I like the Carl Jung quote. People will do anything, no matter how absurd. They'll do anything to avoid facing their own souls, okay? I remember, so I, I attended a men's community. If you've been following me for a while, you know I attended a men's group here in Vancouver, okay? I was in it for, for a couple of years. We'd meet every single night, Monday, or sorry, every single Monday night for three hours. You would, you would share, you would be vulnerable. Um, it, there would be accountability. They would keep you on your, make sure you were on your mission, your purpose, okay? And I remember my, my one friend in this group, okay? We were just chatting, we were on break and we we're, just, we're just chatting. And he goes on to say, he's like, yeah, you know, men and women aren't dating that much these days. And he starts going into, you know, these kind of, you know, vague, you know, vague facts or opinions, whatever you want to call them. He's like, yeah, no, women, it's so hard for men and women to date these days. And um, he goes, you know, all women, he goes, all women, they want the, the highest income earning men. So it's extremely hard. And, and it's, it's men are having such a hard time getting women because women only want this top 10% of income earners. And I could tell, I was like, man, this guy's been, in my head I was saying, this guy's been watching way too much content. Like this guy's been watching way too much YouTube and getting completely polluted by these men's channels, okay? And um, so I just stay curious because I knew, it, I knew it was deeper than that. And so I asked him, I said, so are you, are you dating now? Like, are you dating at the moment? And he goes, no. He goes, no, I'm not dating. And I said, how come? How come? He's like, ah, you know, I just feel like a bit of hesitance. Um, you know, I just, I feel a lot of hesitation, a lot of fear about getting back out there. And um, so then I asked him, I said, so what's, what, what's it bringing you up? Because it, it was a really incredible group. You could be vulnerable with each other, right? And um, so I asked, what's, what does that bring up for you, like, from, from your past, right? Like, from when you were young. And he goes, well, you know, I just, I was never, I was never that guy that women liked. I was always chubby, right? I was always the guy that women never paid attention to. I could never, I had to work so hard to get a woman's attention and, and to get a date. Um, it just brings me back to that place. And so underneath that whole thing, Okay, um, he ends that off and he goes, he goes, oh my God. And he has this big realization and he goes, we need to have a phone call this week. Can you, can you, take, can you take a phone call? Can we jump on the phone and, and talk about this? I was like, hell yeah, of course we can, right? So ultimately you see this, okay? All the statistics, you know, oh, it's hard for men and women to date and men are only looking for the top 10% of men. And the only reason he's consuming that content is because he's in pain over here. He's got unresolved things over here that he's dealing with from his past, right? And so consuming this content is, is an escape. It's a way to make himself feel better about why he is the way he is. And that's what these channels are doing. They're, they're encouraging people to use force, okay? To use force. And remember, force is rooted in, in fear, and fear is nothing more than an illusion. It's not the truth. And I can't even explain to you how dangerous this is to use that type of force. Because as you see with my friend in the men's group, using, believing into that force, believing into that, that falsehood, it prevents him from looking at the thing he actually needs to look at. So he can have a better experience and a better, better belief system and a better way to navigate the world, okay? Now, let's take a look at this on, on, a, on a more historical scale. Making somebody wrong so you can be right is so dangerous. It absolves you of taking responsibility for what you experience, and it, it, again, it deters you from looking at the actual problem, which lies within yourself, okay? So even on a, on a larger historical scale, making someone right, making someone wrong, okay? Over here in Canada, we had, we had the residential schools, okay? So, People, the Catholic Church over here was literally taking indigenous kids outside, forcefully taking them outside of their homes, trying to brainwash them. Why? Because they thought their way of life was wrong and theirs was right. This is how dangerous this gets. Yes, and it's an extreme example if you think it is. I don't think it is extreme. I think it plays out at that type of level and even in every, every personal interaction you're in. This power and this force, okay? Making them wrong 
and because our way of life is right, okay? And look at what happened. They're finding, they're finding here within the last couple of years mass graves of these children in this country, okay? Another thing, so homosexuality was in the DSM as being a mental sickness until 1973. They didn't take that out of the DSM until 1973, okay? Where is the reverence for people's lives is what I'm saying. There's no reverence, there's no love, there's no compassion, right? The core essence of some, what somebody was back then, right, for gay people, is it was considered a me mental sickness. The core essence, one of the core qualities of who they are, people are considering that a mental sickness. Now, if, if you know, uh, so here's, here's what I'm trying to say ultimately. I'm going to wrap this up here because that is clearly a use of force, okay? And remember, for, force is not truth, right? It's transient, okay? Oh, it's in the DSM? Now it's out of the DSM, okay? Oh, indigenous kids, your way of life is wrong? Oh, now it's okay. Now we can celebrate you. It's transient. Whenever you use force, whenever you try to make somebody right and... and, and or somebody else wrong so that you can be right, it's nothing but a power struggle and you're using force and you're using manipulation and control in order to feel better about yourself. Okay, so a hundred years ago, a hundred years ago, my, my dad's dad's dad, so my great gramps came over as an Indian slave from India to Fiji to work on the sugar plantation fields, okay? And if, if, our people didn't do that type of work or they were slouching a little bit, they get whipped, they get beaten, okay? We were treated like absolute animals a hundred years ago, okay? So this whole thing about make men great again or, um, you know, men need to go back to the way they were, I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> like, I don't understand when there was a time where, where everything was just, just amazing and perfect, okay? Because ultimately, I think humanity, we're getting more and more compassion as the years go by, right? Like the examples I've given, taking homosexuality out of the DSM and treating them like human beings, like good job. We're actually treating people more like human beings now. We're becoming more compassionate. The whole residential thing, school system, that would never fly these days. Yeah, but it, the last one closed in 1996, okay? That's how current this is. That would never, never fly these days, ever. It would not be put up with, okay? It would not be tolerated, that type of behavior. So yes, we are becoming more compassionate. A few decades ago, I wouldn't even be allowed in certain shops or in coming into contact with, with certain people because of the color of my skin, right? I would have a big barrier to access, you know, certain things within my community based on my race and my skin color, okay? So yes, I argue the opposite. We are getting more and more compassionate. We have a men's mental health month, right? To, and, and you know, a lot of this came about because of the overwhelming suicide rates for men, okay? And because of that, because people are acknowledging how much men are suffering because of this behavior of keeping everything to themselves and not bringing things forward, out of the fear of being seen as weak, okay, we have a men's mental health month. So by all means, <laughs> don't listen to Andrew Tate. You know, if you're feeling like, you know, you're completely overwhelmed, anxious, and you just need a mental health day, please take one. So I'll wrap this up by saying, man, yeah, man the fuck up. Actually, like man the fuck up, but not by using force. Man the fuck up by owning your shit instead of projecting it onto the world, pushing more fear out in the world, creating more fear in the world, right? And increasing human suffering instead of decreasing it. So I'll leave you with the words of, of David Data, the author of The Way of the Superior Man, The Way of the Superior Man, who actually has you know, a, a, a spiritual component to his teachings which is ultimately aligned with truth, ultimate truth, with the, which is love, as you know now, is don't speak about anything unless it's about truth, love, or the divine, okay? And if it's not aligned with any of those things, 
why is it coming out of your mouth? So very charged up topic. I know, thank you for watching. If you're still with me, thank you for staying with me and allowing me to give my, my opinions, my thoughts on, on this issue. So I appreciate you and we'll talk soon. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.